This video is sponsored by Incogni. We had a great time together, right? I took you everywhere with me. Oh, the fun we had. But just look at you. How could I say no to this? Do you know what? Let's go create some new memories together. It's been two months since I got the 15-inch M2 MacBook Air, and I gotta say, this is turning out to be an absolute banger of a laptop. But I have a big decision to make now. I don't need two M2 MacBook Airs. I love when this happens though, you know? I wasn't really expecting much from the 15-inch. I was quite happy with the 13-inch MacBook Air. And to be perfectly honest with you, I was kind of hoping that we were gonna get an M3 chip with this one. But for what I do, which is a little bit of graphic designing and general admin tasks, oh yes, and the odd video editing too, the M2 MacBook Air has been amazing. Sure, an M3 chip would have been even nicer, but I do think this bad boy will serve me for at least a couple more years, if not more. Like I did with the 13-inch when I ordered that one, I went again for the 16 gig of RAM, but only 256 gig SSD, which if you are to believe, pretty much every other YouTuber out there, these SSD is meant to be horrendous, right? But in my experience, and as you'll be able to see in this video here today, that's a load of nonsense. Let me take you through how I use this laptop and hopefully my decision at the end will help you too. There are a couple of gotchas in this video though, so make sure you get that context. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. In a typical day using the M2 MacBook Air, I'm always on the move, right? If I'm in the office or in the studio recording stuff, this is not really gonna get a lot of use. I use my MacBook Pro for that. This bad boy really comes to life when I'm out and about. The fact that I can chuck this in my bag and not worry about the weight is fantastic. And if I'm going to a cafe or a place like this, then I don't need to take my bag with me even. I just a leather sleeve like this, kind of an envelope size thing. It's perfect for me. Actually, this is from Harbour London. They do amazing products. They keep all my MacBooks in perfect condition. Definitely worth a look. Obviously, portability is 100% the strong suit of this laptop, but you might be wondering how far can you really push it? And rather than show you what like a bunch of random benchmark results, right? Like we all see here on YouTube. Let me just show you my real workflow. For a single product review like this one, I only use maybe 20, 30 shots, thumbnails and you know kind of promoting the video but occasionally i do end up taking 50 sometimes up to 100 shots that i then import into lightroom and choose the best ones for instagram twitter my thumbnails so let's do that let's load up 100 shots here and edit them i actually ended up importing 150 images and the import itself didn't even touch the disk you know it was really really quick less than 10 seconds probably but for the photographers out there what i did notice is that if you're scrolling through really quick through the images and applying a preset which is something that you might do you do notice that it takes a little while maybe a second to actually catch up and apply that preset. Trials and tribulations. A good example of how great the performance of this machine is, is video editing. And I know this is gonna be a bit of a cliche here on YouTube as well, right? But I won't get your hopes up, okay? Because a lot of reviewers will show you how it's possible to do video editing, and sure, you know, that is true. The machine is very capable, but there are limitations. And I do think that these limitations are not exclusive to video editing. And when I say limitations, I mean storage size, GPU, CPU, and also memory. Let me show you what I mean. In my videos, I might have two tracks of talking head in a multicam scenario like this one. I'm talking to this camera here, but there's also that guy over there, right? Hello. So that's already two tracks of 4K, 10-bit, 422 video in English. These are heavy files. From here, I then add more B-roll shots. That's again, more 4K footage in different frame rates sometimes, usually 60 frames for product shots. And sometimes, I 120 frames per second, which I use for a slow motion. Then I add music, sound effects, motion graphics, some with 3D tracking too, which again, all add up to the load on the processing power, be that the GPU or the CPU cores. And from a file size perspective, we're talking over 100 gig per video, which may not sound like a lot, but if you're doing this every week, you know, it's gonna add up quite quickly. So not much point in my opinion using local storage, unless you're doing this like once in a blue moon. If you're really busy generating a lot of heavy files, then I'd say external storage is still the best option for me. And these external SSD drives, they really serve me really well. I use them all the time, even with my MacBook Pro, the, the one with two terabytes, because they're just too convenient for me. Now, I have to be real here because not everyone generates the amount of heavy files that I do. And if that's you, don't worry about spending even more money on external storage, right? If you're not generating those heavy files every week, then you're not gonna need external storage anyway. Maybe for backup, but there are cheaper options for that. There's actually a word of caution that I wanna share about upgrading storage, which I'll cover a bit later in the video. For me, it's all about reliability. In the last three years doing these videos, 
they haven't let me down a single time. I love these things. The other limitation on the M2 MacBook Air, as I said, is gonna be performance in CPU and GPU and memory. This one to me is less important when I'm actively editing videos, but it will become important when you are exporting the footage. And that may apply for things like, you know, exporting a lot of raw images in, in Lightroom. A 15 minute video will take me about 10 minutes to export on my M1 Max MacBook Pro. The same 15 minute video on the M2 MacBook Air would take me about 45 minutes to maybe an hour to export. Yeah, not many people will show you that, but here, you know, I'm not gonna hide that from you. What I do love about this laptop though, is how I really don't have to worry about the battery. Sometimes I'd love to just kind of go out and relax in a cafe, you know, a bit of change of scene to get a different sort of inspiration. I, I might even be doing some of my nine to five work calls, catching up with my emails, working on my next script, and of course, responding to your lovely comments as well. Sure, I could use a tablet for that or my phone, but I don't know, there's something about using a laptop that to me, you know, gets you in the right mood to be more productive. And yeah, the MacBook Air for me is the perfect laptop for that. It's very convenient to carry it around and makes you look professional. All those 80,000 unread emails, I can explain. I was getting so much junk email that I actually had to give up on that inbox and create a new one. And even though it's a bit of fun to see that huge number and have an internal competition here to see who's gonna get to 100K first, I think I found a better solution, you know? This is where Incogni comes in. They are sponsoring today's video, but they're brilliant. Because if I'm really honest, I don't feel comfortable knowing that all these companies have my details and, you know, all my data is floating around without my consent, which could lead to like, you know, identity theft and, you know, horrible things. We're always hearing about these data breaches, right? And how companies, even huge companies, get exposed and our personal data end up in the hands of these data brokers or oh, in hitting unsubscribe on those emails. In a lot of cases, hitting that unsubscribe link will actually confirm to the sender that the mailbox is active, right? And you guessed it, you're gonna get even more junk. These data brokers are everywhere. There's no stopping them. Selling our data turns out to be very lucrative. But this is where Incogni comes in. Honestly, it's pretty amazing what they do. They will find. I will find you. And request the data brokers on your behalf to remove your information. And if they object, Incognito will take care of that for you as well. Are a very particular set of skills. I'm sure it's not that dramatic. Not gonna lie, I was a little bit skeptical, but if it's one thing that I really wanna do is get my information kind of removed from all these data brokers. It was super easy to get going as well. All I had to do was create an account using the details that I wanted removed and grant Incognito permissions to work on my behalf. And like I'm doing right now, I just sat back and relaxed. And this was really cool. Within a couple of minutes, literally two minutes, I was already able to see in the Incognito dashboard that they discovered over 50 data brokers that had my personal information. Now check this out, three days after signing up, they already dealt with 37 requests. That means 37 data brokers already started the process of removing my data. 16 of them already confirmed they don't hold my data anymore. This is incredible. I'm feeling a lot more relaxed about my personal information out there. And the good news for you is that for the first 100 people who use the link below with my code AlexG, Incogni will give you 60% off when you sign up. And thanks again Incogni for sponsoring and making this video possible. One question that you might be asking is how good is a 15 inch display for entertainment as you can see here i'm in a pretty bright space right and the display is pretty damn good sure you get some reflections like in any display right and it's not as contrasty as my macbook pro display but it's certainly no slouch whether i'm watching bright animated movies or darker ones like batman for example it's still performing really really well and talking about performance what about the gaming experience right and you might say gaming on a mac don't be crazy right you must be mad no i'm pretty serious well there are two types of gaming right sure we can play games on the Mac itself, but with a decent internet connection, we can actually enjoy what I call proper gaming. I've been using both the Xbox Cloud app and the NVIDIA GeForce Now, and all I can say is, I can't believe this is possible now. Hooking the MacBook Air to a larger monitor or a TV and adding a gaming controller, and there you go, AAA gaming experience on a Mac. I wouldn't say this is a battle station, right, for a competitive game, but it's pretty good, right? And for a more casual gaming setup, you can of course still enjoy the games that we've got on Apple Arcade. I know what you're thinking, right? They're, they're rubbish. Well, they are getting a little bit better, but in my opinion, they're still, I don't know, a decade or two from something decent in terms of gaming. What I did notice though, when I wasn't wearing my earbuds or headphones, is that the speakers are a lot better now. To give you an idea, here's a short comparison between the 13 inch and the 15 inch, and also the MacBook Pro speakers as well. Not for a comparison, of course, but for reference. I 
know if you could notice it, but for me, it's a big improvement. Something else I get to do a lot for my nine to five work is use Microsoft Windows. The beauty with any Macs is that you can run virtual machines now, like with Windows 11 even, without any compatibility issues. There's a few options out there for mad people like me who wants to use Windows, but the best software for that, in my opinion, is Parallels. They actually just released a new version actually this week, taking advantage of the new Mac OS Sonoma that's coming. I've used Parallels for many years because I always use Macs at work, but you know, also worked with Windows apps. And they really make the whole process of building a virtual machine and managing the resources a lot easier. Can't recommend them enough. Oh, and thank you so much for everyone who sent their questions. Let's go through some of them here. How does the MacBook Air hold up against the M1 MacBook Pro? Honestly, I think you're only gonna notice the difference when you're doing heavy stuff like exporting hundreds of raw images or editing videos. And of course, if you compare side by side, the display as well. But from most of the stuff that I do, it's very comparable. Which MacBook would you buy for yourself? The 15 inch, I'll explain later. Saeed asks, can you install Windows? Yes, I run Windows 11 on all my Macs and I use Parallels for that. And Nuhin Al Sanim, <laughs> I probably got that wrong. He's asking if it's worth buying the MacBook Air for coding and creative work. Absolutely, I'll leave you some links down below as well for the day in the life videos that I did. One of them was a graphic designer day in the life, so it might be worth watching that. But if I was to summarize those videos, one recommendation that I would give is upgrade the memory to 16 gig. Will Steck is asking, what is your favorite thing about the MacBook 15 inch? And I'd say it's definitely the screen, it's about the extra space without adding much to the weight. Stefan is asking which one is better for video editing? 100% the 15 inch, not so much because of the performance because they are pretty much the same, but the extra bit of display will definitely help you. It means you don't have to zoom in or out of the timeline too much and you can see more on the timeline. So that's always gonna be useful. And thank you so much everyone for saying hello here. I responded to all of you there as well. Decision time. Right, decision time. Which one am I gonna keep and who cares about that actually, right? More importantly, which one would I recommend and why? The highlights of these two months, of course, has to be the portability. And like I said in my initial review, I didn't want to keep this laptop at all. I was going to return it because I like my 13 inch, but I really enjoyed having this extra real estate on the display without adding much weight to it. It's almost like having the best of every single world, right? Performance, portability, and a big display. It really is a thing of beauty now. Going back to the original MacBook Air, it's always been a favorite of mine for portability. But having used this 15 inch, I don't see myself going back to the 13 inch after this. The other reason I love this laptop is the price. At this configuration, which for me is a decent sweet spot, it's a fantastic value for money, hard to beat actually, which is where my word of caution that I mentioned a bit earlier comes into play a little bit. If you start adding more storage and you know memory to this laptop, you run the risk of entering the 14 inch MacBook Pro realm. And that to me is a better overall laptop. It's getting on a little bit now, it's getting older, right? But it's still a pro machine and it's gonna give you more bang for your buck, I think. But if you still prefer the portability of the 15 inch, then I would say just be very intentional with your upgrades. For instance, you may not wanna buy another laptop for a few years and that longevity aspect is gonna be really important to you. And in that case, the upgrade to 512 gig or even one terabyte might make sense for you. I certainly wouldn't recommend going near or past the $2,000 mark on a MacBook Air, but that's just me. Now, if you don't care about the extra real estate on the display, save a few hundred, right? And get the 13 inch because it's an even better deal right now. See you soon.